me and Eagle Eyes, we are traveling up this forest road here for about four kilometers and we're gonna walk a very special road. It's very special indeed and uh, it's a pretty cold morning but we like that and the weather is nice so it's gonna be an interesting day. Can you imagine being a young mother carrying your child together with tens of thousands of others fleeing from the Red Army? Well, that's exactly what happened here. That's exactly what happened here. And it's a very scary place, to be honest. A very scary place to... If you look into the history of this place, it's like very, very scary. Nevertheless, we're here and we're gonna share some very special images from this location. We decided that we wanted to walk 10 kilometers just to have the experience kind of in your legs. I wanna show you something here. There are no trench systems, organized trench systems or special kind of organized dugouts or things like that. All you find in this forest is a massive thick layer of moss, but it's not enough to cover up some of the craters of the Red Army's artillery shooting towards the uh, Germans fleeing, also shooting towards all the civilians. But you can find, every here and then, you'll find dugouts where people gathered, they hid down into the craters of the mortars and the artillery shell and the bombs from the aircrafts. And there's also the tiny, small, one-man foxhole here and there. But what is very typical is this extremely thick layer of moss which very quickly reveals, um, or oh, very, very hardly reveals its story, which is just underneath here. All of these pieces that was lost or thrown away or blown away. All of these pieces, they are here everywhere next to the road a bit into the forest, but most of them are here, right next to the shoulders of the road here. And they are the pieces that was once important for these people. But when war rages on for full power, then you tend to just leave everything and just run. So that's why you can find personal belongings, you can find um, traveling cases, you can find weapons, hand grenades, mortars, you name it. It is all here. It is absolutely all here. It's just a matter of finding it. Or you can actually just go browsing like this, checking out the sides of what the people have found or what the forest uh, workers finds and just throws around because they are the kings in here. They decide what happens here, and you can see why, because there are zillions of trees which they cut down and do all kinds of things with, and in the end it ends up as lumber or firewood or whatever. So we have a couple of kilometers to go that way, and we are about three kilometers in the forest, and still as we continue down the road here, we see pieces. We've seen some cartridges. I see a lot of wildlife as well. And everywhere we can see small dugouts. Also, some places you can see twisted and torn up metal objects, which are all from the uh, events. All of that took place here on this road. 
But many of the uh, refugees and, and um, soldiers, many of them here from the Ninth Army, uh, they escaped and flew like 10, 20 meters next to the road. So many of the objects that are here are actually, you know, like 20, 25 meters out there. Because if you were on the road, you were an easy target. And the um, Red Army homed into these roads and they continued to hammer onto them. And they were attacked constantly by the Aleutian aircrafts and the, uh, well, just about anything you can imagine was thrown out the uh, refugees who flew westwards. So this is basically uh, the road to hell, a road from hell, because they came from Halbe and that was hell, Merkish Bukholz, which is a bit further um, east, was completely devastated. So they all had one chance, and that was to flee in this direction. And that's exactly what they did. But can you imagine, as I said, being a mother of a child or two, the only thing you have is your children. You have just the clothes that you have on yourself, and there's no way you can pack and carry a ton of stuff because there's no way you're going to be able to travel fast. So it must have been horrifying, but there are very, there's a lot of brave stories that people have made books of and, and, and told uh, their family and all of that later. So there was a lot of bravery with the soldiers helping the civilians to move on, to move on. And they also gave their food to them and, well, just basically were humans to the civilians. So. Very special stories happening right here. Eagle Eyes told me, Daddy, 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 look. I'm gonna show you something. See that? This thing has been kind of chopped off and there's a Russian cartridge in there. Can you get it out? Jeez, no. It's stuck in there? But look at that. How did that happen? Someone has cut that off with a saw. Maybe that was hammered in. Wait, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll fix it. Let me see. Oh. No, it's hammered in by probably the foresters. But that's what it meant. See that? That speaks so much, so many words. Wow. And that is a Soviet cartridge hammered into a wooden piece on the road of, road of death. That is just one example of the countless, countless um, things that are in the ground here. I don't know how that got there, but nevertheless, there are so, so many pieces of those few hours of hell here. And that's what I wanted Eagle Eyes and you to experience. When you walk in here, you kind of think, oh, beautiful nature, and it is. But four kilometers in here, and you suddenly realize that, well, they had no time to look at nature then. They had no time to say, oh, it's beautiful. They feared for their life. They really, really had to hustle to get further west. This piece here uh, with leather on was just laying here. Yeah, it's time frame correct. The, the road is kind of a bit wider here. I don't know. Oh, we're gonna continue. We are soon getting to four and a half kilometers in, I think, or around that, or is it four? I can't remember. Nevertheless, 
starting to feel it in the lakes to be honest <laughs> so we have a lot of food and stuff cameras and all kind of gear in the backpack so uh, you can feel the weight for sure but i'm proud Eli's he is such a strong boy yes i am yes he is he says <laughs> that's confident and uh, he can do this for sure. He can absolutely do this. Are you sure? Yes, you have to carry me in the end. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, I want to thank you, each and every one of your supporters for letting us have the opportunity to do this walk. For me, it's important to let Eagle Eyes have the experience like this. So he really can feel the pain that all of these people went through. Uh, I've done this work once earlier, uh, also rode it with a bike. I wished Eagle Eyes could do it earlier, but he, he, he's not just strong enough, he is this year. And uh, it's going to be amazing for him to have the experience to take with him and say, I walked that walk, I've seen the forest, I've seen the pieces, and I also actually shared it with a lot of people. And he just told me half an hour ago, he said, Daddy, please let him see the whole video, don't edit it. And I won't, because I'll just include whatever we record here. And in that way, you will get the full experience. Of course, I cannot do like three hours of video, but <laughs> you get what I mean. The real kings of the forest today, they are in here. They're just starting to wake up. But when they are fully active, they decide and rule here. And they're about the only thing that I really don't like in here are those because they really pinch you if they get you. <laughs> We're coming up to the six kilometer mark. Still going strong. But imagine, just imagine this little thing here. I like to imagine things when I'm out. Probably you do as well. But imagine, go out and walk with your friend or family, and you start walking and you count kilometers. One kilometer, so one mile, whatever you like to call it. And you start walking and you go first, easy, second, easy, third, easy, fourth, fifth. Well, then it kind of tells you that you're on a longer journey and then five six seven eight whatever miles it's starting to get pretty you know tiring uh, you have kid and uh, one kid in the left hand one kid in your right hand maybe your friend is a bit slow maybe his granddad which is coming along with you is even slower but guess what um it's fine why is it fine well simple because you don't have six million mortar shells or artillery shells hammering around you do you you don't have russian aircrafts hammering down on you with machine guns you don't have tanks t-34s swooshing around in the forest looking for you to kill you so for us doing this walk here for about 10 kilometers it's it's a reminder of, uh, of what we are actually fortunate to do to go out and have a walk without fearing for your life <laughs> so for me this is nothing i have a backpack i have eagle eyes with me everything is fine and we share it with you but just imagine how it would have been as I said, if you were one of these people who were carrying a child, machine gun fire everywhere, and right here, right here, you had to jump down into that little dugout because the enemy was just down that little ridge there, firing crazy towards you. And you don't, you don't just have five more kilometers, you have 300 kilometers before you could even say that yourself. How do you do that? That is what I wonder. How did I do it? We read about a 
position. You can see it goes a bit down here and then you can see it goes a bit up. So from there and up on the ridge here, there's a lot of dog foxholes. This is a defensive position where some of the German soldiers were ordered to try and hold back the Red Army as the civilians flew further into that. So on the top, on the ridge there, there's a lot of foxholes. So we're gonna check that out later. But uh, this ridge is just a tiny bit like 10 meters higher than the rest of the terrain. And that's why they said, let's see if we can stop the Red Army a little bit so the civilians can get further. And uh, that's exactly where they dug down. Very special little thing here, see here? This tree has come kind of loose and in the root here, that's a gas mask ring for a German gas mask. There's another one here. See that? Two gas mask rings, a leather strap, and they just came out when the tree fall over, I guess. And they're here, just laying here. See that? One gas mask ring. And another gas mask ring. Very special, huh? Getting close to seven kilometers now. This hut here, it's a typical German hut. The landowners have access to insanely huge areas. And they take advantage of that with hunting. They climb up there. And if you're here at the wrong season, you're not wearing an orange high visibility kind of thing, guess what? You're going to be shot. <laughs> it's, it's going to be really, really difficult to explain yourself out of that because there are huge warnings everywhere that if you enter this area when the hunting season is here, you better wear insanely visible clothing and, and the headgear. Let me show you something here. See that? That is most definitely a piece of a twisted and mangled. Oh my goodness, Eagle Eyes, it's the artillery shell. From the. F look at that. Is that 88 millimeter? That is crazy. That's what I just wanted to see. Wanted you to see. I think it's a. No, it's not an 88. It could be. I'm not sure. Look at that. That is exactly what the. Road of Death is all about. Couldn't be visualized better than that thing there. Holy mackerel. Eagle Eye just said, Daddy, that cartridge there, it was, I don't think it's been fired. I think that was one of the German cartridges here with a gun they had maybe to defend the, the, the uh, refugees and themselves. And something hit that gun or the munition that was there and it just exploded because it wouldn't have been like that if it hadn't been exploding. So I think that it was actually a hit by the Red Army hitting the Germans right there. And I know that in this specific area, the Germans tried to halt for a little second because there was enough room along the forest to rig up a few guns and then counter attack further down into the forest, the uh, Red Army coming in. So I think maybe that the Germans did that here and then the Red Army found them, maybe by aircrafts or triangulating where they kind of um, came from. And in that way, they uh, just fired in that direction and boom, that was hit. Right there is one of the uh, dugouts where they had a mortar. That's because we're getting very close to the Autobahn and they had to defend themselves so they could kind of keep track of what was coming behind them. And there are several mortar positions here that I set up just to try and prevent the uh, Red Army from following them over the, uh, the old Autobahn or highway. Oh yes. Seven and a half, getting close to eight kilometers now. I'm so proud of Eagle Eyes, he's such a trooper. Uh, it's really tough. 
the backpack is nagging my back. I have to carry Eli's backpack for kilometers now, just to help him out a little bit. And this is, we're getting close, close to the end, the crossing point where they had to cross the Autobahn over two bridges that were still available. And there was a massive queue and tens of thousands of people trying to cross over there. I promised those of you who donated specifically for the Eastern Front road trip that I'll do something special for you. I'll take you along every time we go up on this uh, journey. And I did. And uh, I want to say a special thank you for the Eastern Front road trip to all of those on this list here that I'm carrying around. So you're actually coming with us on the battlefields, in the trenches, in the foxholes. And I want to say a massive thank you to each and every one of you who came in uh, before we left on the uh, super thanks feature. I want to say a massive thank you. This is one of the main reasons for us to be able to do what you see on this explores on the Eastern Front and uh, I just want to say again massive thank you for that. Thank you everyone. Yeah thank you thank you and uh, let's continue. Oh my holy padoli we are getting close to the end of the line here. In this area we see several dugouts that's because uh, there's a I'm going to take you over here. There's a motor position here as well. The reason for that is that there were so many people trying to get down one uh, narrow road that they couldn't do that. So what they did, they told people to go to different smaller roads. And that is one of the dugouts they put right there. It's still there because there were tens of thousands of people streaming through here and they divided them up. So some of them took this road here which is now completely kind of gone and others came straight out from the bridge and continued straight forward from the bridgehead itself and now we're going to go down to where the original bridge were and i think we're just a few hundred meters away and thank god for that because we are starting to get really really tired Tiny little feather there from a bird. First one we've seen. This is the very last stretch of uh, Forest Road that used to be the original road into the bridge. And this is exactly where all of these people had to come. They had to come directly where we are now. And uh, I don't know, it took us about, how long did we spend? One and a half hour? Uh, let me see. That, that is the spearhead of the bridge right there yep that's it this is where the bridge came down so that piece of um that piece of uh, area here is very historic and i took you there with eagle eyes and myself and this is exactly the crossing point where everybody had to come down this off-ramp here i'm actually going to go to the top of the off-ramp just to say that we did that do you agree eagle eyes let's go on to the top of the off-ramp and uh yeah let's do that That is the off-ramp, that's the autobahn, and down here came all 
the tens of thousands of refugees and uh, soldiers who fled away from the Red Army. They much rather wanted to, to surrender to the Allied, and I can really truthfully understand that. Let me show you something that Eagle Eyes found on the top here. This is absolutely unbelievable. I think it's another artillery shell. It is. It is definitely a artillery shell. And how special it is to see that. So we walked, we had a little mishap and had to do a little detour. We walked for, we walked for about um, One and a half hour, yeah, I think we walked 12 kilometers to get here. Let me bring you down to uh, what they came to. They came down to this, this forest here. And this is what met them. A forest that just runs for hours and hours and hours that way and, and for me this is very special it's very special to have been a witness to see eagle eyes do this journey i just so much wanted him to do that i've done it with bunker buster girl and now him and i did it with all of you so it's our like symbol of saying thank you because you are the guys and girls who makes this come true. There's no other ways we could have done this. So thank you to each and every one of you. Thank you to each and every one. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you each and every one. We're going to sit down. We're going to have a little break here. We're going to be picked up on the highway on a, by a friend. And uh, we don't have to walk anymore. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this little walkabout directly here on the Eastern Front outside of Halbe. We did our best and uh, we think you can uh, learn by this experience to appreciate what these humans had to go through. That is indeed a very special place. And if you want to help us out to reach more locations like this, we have this little super thanks feature here. Basically your opportunity to help us out to go out and find and share even more great history. But these roads and this forest, it hides a million artifacts. And as you saw, it's just about to get the experience. And Eagle Eyes, my son, he really wanted to experience this. I've done the same trip with my daughter. And it is very, very special to be there. It's like a time machine because everywhere you walk and see down into the ground these are the artifacts that are actually just laying there even today so you can imagine the havoc there with thousands of civilians and when you go in the forest you can find civilian pieces maybe a toothbrush you can find a little piece for a lamp or for a little cigarette box you will find the red army artifacts cartridges, shell casings, you know, all of that. And then, of course, you'll find tons of pieces of the German soldiers' activity. You can find, as you saw, gas mask pieces just laying around. You'll find bayonets just laying around, some actually stuck into trees. You can find panzer tracklings. This is a piece from a German stick hand grenade. That's a magazine for a pistol, some leather pieces. You have um, 20 millimeter, you have a signal flare, machine gun belt, buckles, you know, razors. It, it's, it's everywhere. And it, it's a very, very special place to be. And it should be experienced because when you walk inside there, you really can feel that this is the road of death because of what you see in the ground, just laying around, you don't have to dig or anything. It's just open your eyes and see down into the ground and these are everywhere. So it's a very unique place, a very unique experience. 
And in a way, as I said, it should be experienced because it really tells the story and the story of utter and true chaos, mayhem and war. So the civilians, they died in the thousands there. So did the German soldiers, the Red Army. It's just mind-blowing to see what history is all about down there. So it's well worth the experience, as I said. So thank you again, everybody, for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving us a thumbs up. Thank you to all our patron team members who makes this come true. Could not have done this without you. And as you saw, we have this super thanks feature. You can help us out. But also in the video description, there are links for our PayPal donation thing. And if you want to become a patron team member, you can find links for that there. All right. I will definitely be back and we will share more with you. So in the meantime, please stay safe. Keep smiling. And before you know it, we'll share some more history with all of you.